Six years ago, I picked up a slingshot to go on History Channel's Alone Show Season 3. People always go on these survival shows bringing bow and arrows, and up to that point, I had never seen anybody achieve their goal of taking a big game and surviving well. So I thought, I'd rather just be more like Dennis the Menace. How about a slingshot? 87 days later and only getting one bird with my slingshot, it might not have been the best choice. So when I came home after winning season three of Alone, I knew there was still a ton of adventures out there for me and my slingshot. I'm Zachary Fowler, and this is the story of the adventures my slingshot's taken me on for the past six years. Got him! All right. Woo! I knew if I was going to hunt with my slingshot, I'd have to be a better shot. So I played around with all kinds of trick shots in an effort to learn a better method of shooting that would give me a greater degree of accuracy when a survival and eating was on the line. Unfortunately, slingshot hunting in Maine isn't legal, but I did have one opportunity that came up after a loan when I went to visit Dan Walwack of Cold Tracker Bushcraft in Pennsylvania. That was kind of odd. Fighting it! Fight it! Fight it! You can do it! Ah, oh, it's so big! <laughs> it, <lo> <laughs> it looks big when you hold it like that, and then it's like <laughs> tiny. <laughs> there you oh. go. Oh. He's done. He's done. Got him. Got him. Yeah. Now we gotta get him back up. Oh, he floated right to the bottom. How do we get him? He's going in. He's going in. I got my, I got a kill, I got to go after it. Oh! <laughs> I didn't think they'd sink that quick. Did I didn't, no, I didn't either. either. I thought they would be at the, uh... I always see them floating. I think they swell up after a little bit and then he floats. You know? Throw them up. There we go. Finish <laughs> with a slingshot. <laughs> Can't like what now. Oh, a little wet there. Now. Look at that. Talk about dead eye, look. <laughs> right in the oh, eye. Wow. Right in the eye. <laughs> Is it still in there? Uh, no, no. That's cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, like they do in the, uh, with, the, with your deer, you know, you got your yeah. trophy photo. You're like, we'll get you a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Fish That's with a slingshot. Wild. That's wild. <laughs> uh, I guess we got to eat him now. I guess yep. you do. <laughs> Yummy. I go for it. Grilling my kill. Good. Like my dad said there, you gotta eat it if you kill it. After a bit more practice and some time, an opportunity arose to go to Texas and do a 30 day survival challenge. While I was there, I almost stepped on a rattlesnake. All right, I don't think I have it in me to go all the way down catfishing, but I keep seeing a rabbit up here, and I tried a shot yesterday at it with the sling bow and missed, so I think I'm going to go for a small walkabout before bed, and I had to tuck everything in before I leave because it's supposed to rain. See if I can't find that rabbit and take him down. My favorite simple shot slingshots, the torque, and to hunt while I'm being out here, put my ammo in like this, pinch it, and then pinch the slingshot so I can carry it like this, ready, ready to go. I just go, boom, and I'm locked, loaded, ready to go. And that way I can carry the camera with the other hand here while I'm doing my thing. Found my first rattlesnake. Wow. Holy cow. That about stopped my heart. I was three feet from him, and he started rattling, and I stepped back. I, oh, I'm like, good thing I got, like, ninja reflexes. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He didn't strike, but uh, I took him out with the slingshot. There we go. That's uh, going to be a catch and cook, a uh, rattlesnake with the simple shot hammer slingshot. Whoops. This is not the hammer. This is the torque. This is the hammer. Woo! Oh, thank you, God, for keeping me safe from that one and blessing me with this meal. That was a... Uh, woo! 
I don't want to get too close, but I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Look at that, right in the top of the head. There's the piece of lead ammo that did it right there. What a beautiful snake. Take off the head. Whew. Just thank God I wasn't bit. I mean, he was cold, so he wasn't going far, and he didn't really start making any noise till I was right up on him. And he was okay because he was cold not to strike out at me. So I got myself some more food. I got myself some more food. What a beautiful creature. And I'm going to take and uh, skin it out. And I will be able to make myself a rattlesnake skin. Something or other. Thank you, Lord. Whew. You're keeping me safe. Providing me with food. Yeeha. Oh, there it is. As a lucky piece of lead, I'm going to keep that. Night is where it's happening. Do I go back or keep going? That's not enough to feed us both, Chris and I, for all that long. I better keep going. Well, darn, big old miss on the rabbit. Wouldn't have that been epic if I had a rattlesnake and a rabbit all in one go. Not done yet, though. I still got some life left in me. I'm going to keep making the most of this night and circle my way around back to camp. The grabber's kind of tough, but not super tough. All right, here we go. Big old possum with a slingshot. It took me two shots, and then uh, Chris showed up, and it didn't smell bad. Chris showed up, and yeah, he, he was stuck up in the tree, so I had to use the snake grabber to snag him. And uh, now we can eat some something bigger and more substantial. I wonder what possum tastes like. All right, so rattlesnake and possum are on the cooks, gunned out, ready to go. This guy's only about the size of a rabbit, but a good, healthy, like, farm-raised rabbit. He's got a lot of fat on him, so that should make really good. I'm trying to decide whether I leave him over the fire to smoke or if I got to put him in a pot because it's supposed to rain. And I got a skin from the snake. And I want to save that so I could do something with it. Don't know what. The snake's at the bottom. I filled it with a bunch of water. Some wadobo, wooded beardsman. Tastes great on possums, rattlesnakes, catfish, everything. Look at that. Whew, there's a lot of meat and holy cow, there's a lot of fat. There's more fat than I thought there was. There's just big old globs of fat floating around in here like that holy cow that meat it just cooked overnight on the fire in this pot just melting away <clears throat> all right Ooh, epic epic feast I'm used to just eating once a day and not not necessarily quite as many calories as this probably even thank you Lord for the epic hunt and providing us with the possum and rattlesnake ah oh, thank you Jesus thank you for this bountiful feast amen oh this is so good just look at that look at that big old blobs of fat Mmm, it just melts in your mouth. That's what I needed. Mmm, mmm, there's so much. There's so much to this meal. It's just so good. 
How about a piece of rattlesnake? I can see already that it's like 99% bones. Whoop, here's a piece that came off. Nothing crazy. And it's all cooked like this, it's just all like a, it's just all white. That's good too. He has a lot more meat on him than the water snakes do, but I see a lot of little bones in there. I think it's going to be more like you pick off like this little back strip piece right here. And then the rest of it kind of ends up in the stew pot just for to make rich broth. And I see that right there. That's his spinal cord. And then this little strip comes off of it cleanly. There we go. <laughs> Oh, blah, 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 blah. Mmm. At this point when there, that has been so lean. This is so good. Mmm. What does it taste like? It's not gamey. Um, I wouldn't say it tastes like chicken. It's like turkey. You think turkey? Mixed, like a little bit. I can see that. He says that Chris says he felt like it had a turkey esque vibe. I'm getting like that corned beef feel to it. With how fatty it is, like you know, like a, a corned beef in a pot, and you cook it up with the carrots and the cabbage. Oh, carrots and cabbage. Mmm. And the carrots and cabbage, and then it's got those big old slabs of fat on the side of those corned beef, and and uh, oh. Maybe that's the wadobo spice that kind of brings that flavor out. I feel like I just made myself a corned possum. Because I put the wadobo on it last night before I put it into cook, too. So that is pretty epic. Nice piece of snake there, I think. Mmm. And I don't think it's just because it's been seven days. This is very, very good. This video is brought to you by my own website, FowlersMakeRoomMischief.com. And if all this slingshot talk's getting you excited and you're thinking, hey, I'd love to do this, you can totally do it. It's super easy. Check out FowlersMakeRoomMischief.com. Get yourself a slingshot. They're all wonderful. It's just a matter of which one you like. Each one of them is very accurate. You can learn how to shoot with it. Check out our How to Shoot a Slingshot page on FowlersMakeRoomMischief.com as well. And you can learn how to shoot just like me. After Texas and a little bit of downtime, I headed up to Canada to meet the Wood beardsman and see who's a faster shot the slingshot or the shotgun i rig my slingshot up with some heavier bands guaranteed takedown for the grouse i'm gonna go with a thera band and i got some green cold weather bands in there too should it get a lot colder gets closer down to freezing these will make a big difference the thera band does pretty decent in the cold but the green precise cold weather works really good Do a little practicing, get tuned up because I've been shooting other slingshots a lot lately. But I really think the Axiom is going to be the winner for the uh, for the grouse hunting. So see what she can do. I want to make sure my aim is dead on. I don't want to hurt or wound anything. Stew's on for dinner. We're gonna head on down the road, see if we can get some grouse. You guys wanna hear the best sound in the world? <laughs> We're gonna see if we can uh, cruise around some of these back roads, walk around a bit, get some grouse with a slingshot and some more with the shotgun and have some fun. after them but I actually do. Alright, grab it. Okay. 
<laughs> All right, first grouse with the slingshot. We, uh, I missed him up there on the road. He flew into the bushes. We went up into the woods after him. I found him up in the tree. I shot through uh, a couple pine needles. I think that's why I clipped him along the back of the spine and uh, he was all flopping around. We jumped him in the bushes here and finished him off. That's why I didn't bring the camera for that part because I wanted to make sure I didn't uh, leave him to suffer. So we got him successfully. Well, only one grouse today with a slingshot. That's all right. We got plenty of bear to eat. This will taste pretty good if we cook her up with the uh, bear fat. And uh, I found some lobster mushrooms, which are like this cool mushroom that is not its own mushroom. It basically it colonizes other mushrooms. They're really easy to identify. If you look them up, there's like a, you can't miss it when you find them. And they're a good, tough, like stewing mushroom. So it should be really good. So I took it down to the water, got it, which is just a cut and pull out its insides. I left the heart in there and I took the gizzard and cut that open and cleaned the rocks out. And now I just gotta peel out this tissue here from the gizzard. It's a little tough to eat. And inside here, these two muscles of the gizzard, it would, there's some rocks in there and the bird will grind with the rocks and the food until it's able to work that uh, to its, into its digestive system. The ribs and the front end of the beaver that we haven't finished cooking yet. Looks pretty, uh, not exactly store-bought meaty, a little more red, but it was very delicious. Now we're utilizing everything that we have taken as far as game, you know, the hide is being cleaned by some, the person who had the license to trap it, and they're gonna take that and sell the hide. And it was a nuisance beaver, it was trapped that way, it is permission-wise. So this is very sustainable, uh, healthy uh, hunting uh, that went on and went into this. We're not just taking animals just so we can eat them on, and get views on YouTube. You know, we want to enjoy life. Well, it doesn't look as appealing in the dusky light of uh, dusk. <laughs> but I'm sure it tastes just as good as before. Everything's broken down so much from, was it like a third cooking now on this beaver? Yeah. Mmm, it tastes just as good. Mmm. The beaver's still hitting the spot? Oh, it is, hang on. Especially after trekking around all day. It's better than it was before. It is. It's it's softer and juicier. And it tastes wicked good after trekking around all day and, and trying to get it, all those grouse and stuff. So I guess I won that challenge. <laughs> Just because we didn't see many. But uh, that was a blast. Yeah, that was fun. It was a hard hunt. It was disappointing that we weren't able to find more, but, you know. The weather's not helping us out. No, no. It's too rainy and miserable for birds to even want to show themselves. I mean, we just deserve a pat on the back for not just sitting around when it was rainy and miserable all day, getting out there and trying stuff, trying stuff, see what we could make work kind of thing. Keep ahead of our food. Yep. About a year later, the Wood of Beardsman came for a visit to Maine so we could hunt some lobsters, not with the slingshot, mind you. And we found a little bit of a loophole so that I could hunt some pigeons with the slingshot as well. This is exciting. This is something I've wanted to do for a while and we finally found the right opportunity since slingshot hunting is illegal in Maine, but since we're doing pest control. All right, we are here at the dairy farm. They've asked us to help remove some of the obnoxious pigeons. Hello. Hey, how you doing? I'm Zach. Yeah. Nice to meet yeah. you. Yeah, I haven't got time enough. I want to stand here and watch the pigeons all day. I got other things I got to do. We'll watch our pigeons for you and yeah. see how many we can take back to the stew pot and uh, make the most of it. So we're not just not just helping him out. We are, I mean, we are just helping him out, but we also will be helping ourselves out with something to eat. Go. What are you thinking? Uh, I think let's gear up. Slingshot? Let's gear up the slingshots and... Uh, he said they set up on the silo too. That might be a decent shot. That would be a great shot for the pellet gun if there was something sitting around and uh, stuff. Why don't you run up there and sprinkle some grain? 
<laughs> That's one I just made with that new precise. But I like it. So this is what we're going to use for ammo inside the barn. It's clay, compact balls, not kiln dried, so they're hard. They're just compact, so when they hit the stuff, they disintegrate. And we're going to try and see, they're a little lighter, and hopefully, we're going to test it on a piece of metal first. They won't punch through the, the metal roofing on the beautiful barn here for them. But they're also weighty enough, they don't fly off too much. Which of these sides is not like the other? Three days later, they starved to death. Oh, there we go. We got it. <laughs> All right, here you go. Now you're ready. This is mine. That's yours. What's the... if you get to keep it too? If you get if you get a bird with it. I have to get a bird though. You have to get a bird to if keep I it. If I get two birds, do I get to keep the pouch too? Okay, yeah, you can keep the pouch too. <laughs> if I get two. Yeah, if you get if you get one bird, I'll let you keep the pouch and the slingshot, and I'll even throw in some ammo. Great <laughs> deal. First to three wins. <laughs> what the pigeon look like? They have a, a purplish collar and stuff. I'm pretty sure they're not uh, gun shy. <laughs> they'll probably stay. Anybody see anything? There's lots of these little birds. It's a different kind of bird. Hello. Do you want to scratch? Oh yeah, that feels good. Come here. No? Oh yes. Our little cows. I can talk to cows. Did you know that? Yes, you are. Yes. Oh, yes. You want to scratch under the chin? Oh, you want to lick. You want to lick, huh? Yeah. Oh, lick the camera. <laughs> This is what we do it for, the cows, to protect their feed. <laughs> they are cute though, aren't they? Are you delicious tasting? <laughs> They're not big enough to eat yet, especially this guy here. You would be very tender, wouldn't you? We all see different things when we look at cows. Ooh. Hey there. There's pigeons coming out the backside. It's a bit on the mucky side here. I just heard Chris blah, stomped right in it. Hey, hey, whoever loses has got a belly flop into there. That's, look at that. That's some good stuff right there. That's uh, about a foot of muck right there. Kept in there to, I don't know what they're doing, like letting it, letting it, uh, ooze up so they can spread it on the field later. Exactly. There's our pigeon. Alright. Oh, they just flew off. Oh, oh, there's that was way low. Five up that was way low. That's way that was uh that was like 40 yards. Oh, oh, the, the wind. other one's flying around. <laughs> They're everywhere. I think we can just. All right, keep so we just need to keep moving around until we get them. Yep. Uh, All right, that one. Oh, oh he hopped right down in. I shouldn't second. have hesitated. I should have just flicked it. We go to the other side and see if they're on there, up in that same spot. I think they'll be. Oh, dude, look at this flock of them coming. Okay, here we go. What we got? Ah! Oh, yeah, there's a whole bunch of them up there in the roof of the barn. Oh, man. Woo! Oh, right there. Right there. Oh. All right, my shot. You missed, Chris. Camera guy. 
And which one? Yeah, I'm on you, dude. That one's the left. Boom. One Stone down. Dome. It's oh, okay. Oh, dude. You got to eat that? <laughs> <laughs> Collect your prize. Oh, he's not that dirty. No, he didn't get that dirty. He's... We're gonna have to figure out something about the shadows though for the next shot. So we gotta be like in there, I think. There we go. One down with the slingshot I just made. First shot. Not bad, first shot. First right in try? The, yeah, right in the back of the, the neck there. And uh, yeehaw. Let's see how many more we can get. I was like, I haven't had the chance to do this so far. Like, <sighs> you just stick it in your pocket. That's so gross. Look at he just dropped his slingshot right in the poo. That's my fault because I got him running the camera. I don't know what you want to do with that. We're gonna wipe it on your shirt. All right, that was pretty awesome for my first time out with the air rifle. Just been shooting targets with it so far. Extremely accurate. Extremely quiet. Didn't startle, actually the slingshot round shooting that startled the cows more than anything else and so I, I kind of backed off from trying to get in there and shoot with the slingshot. And we got ourselves some squab to make for dinner. What do you think? It was fun. Yeah. But I'm hungry. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thankfully I brought my... You know, oh look at there, they're sitting yeah, right there just mocking us. They circled around, they I They circled them. back. <laughs> They, they, they know we're leaving. <laughs> yeah, so they're coming back. Dear Diary, I wonder why fancy restaurants call pigeon squab on the menu. Does churching it up make it all that much more palatable? It's probably more about the price point. Because who's going to pay 28 bucks for an ounce of pigeon? Maybe they're on to something. After all, Chinese restaurants call those pieces of meat on a stick teriyaki. And everybody knows what those are made out of. So if I was to open a fancy restaurant and I wanted to put squirrel on the menu, I wonder what you'd call it. You'd have to call it something good if you wanted a high price point.
be tree fritters, tree fryers, fur, no, not fur, definitely not fur. I don't know, I bet the French have a word for it. I think these are, oh, came right off of there. Oh, dude, these are so juicy and so wet. <laughs> this is like, this is so much better than the turkey, this, Oh my goodness, it smells like chicken. These, these little pigeons are like juicy, delicious chicken. Would you look at that? Would you look at that? It's like a tiny chicken. It's all there, all juicy. Let's take a bite and find out. Oh, the little wings. Mm. Oh, this is so fatty. Oh, so the pigeon has a slight, um, just like some of these other birds have had, smaller birds, has a slight liver taste to it. You ever notice that? No. Yeah. Tastes like a liver? Yeah, having a slight taste, almost a, a hint of liver. And when you think of slingshot hunting, what do you think of hunting the most? Squirrels. Well, a cool opportunity arose in Canada and we were super hungry. We found some special squirrels. I think I'm gonna head over and check on the gopher situation. That's not as fun as fishuation. Gopheration, gopher, gopher situation. I still got a gopher on the uh, agenda, my bucket list here. Get a gopher with my slingshot. Well, it'd be good. They just, they duck, dodge, dive, weave, Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. If you master the five Ds, no amount of balls on earth can hit you. They're so good at it. Huh. And, uh, or I miss, one of the two, and I just, huh. yeah. Well, they're just sneaky. Sneaky little buggers. Approaching the gopher area. They're just on the other side of those trees there, but the sentry gopher that was there yesterday and let everybody know what's coming is gone. This has got to be the hardest thing in the world to film and do at the same time. I see a couple of them out here though. There's two of them down there. Right there and right there. And they ran away. Got one, that was about 35 feet. Whew. I'm waiting for that shot. That was the perfect shot, perfect distance. And boom, simple shot slingshot, this is the new one. I think that's why I've been missing so much because it's a little bit different grip than I'm used to. So I kept going high, kept going high. Thank you, Lord. Last thing on my adventure bucket list right there. That was a good shot too. He had poked his head up. There was just the teeniest bit of space and uh, got him right in, the, right in the ear, right in the head. Boom, he was down. And uh, I went over and made sure he, it was, made sure it was over, but uh, especially made sure that he wasn't uh, just wounded and could duck back into the hole, but he was, he was done, he was done. There we go. And uh, I'm on my phone because the card died in, in the uh, camera. And so I gave him, he, he ducked down, he came back up in another spot a couple inches over and we got him, we got him. Another good head shot. Two gophers with the slingshot.
Hey, buddy. Hey, man. Al? Well, I got clean gophers we can good. cook. Well, that's good. That's all yeah. we got. That's all we have. No fish this time no. for our last supper. I can't believe we got skunked on the last day. Oh, hell. You know? Oh, Maybe well. that's a sign we've had enough fish. Yeah. Yeah, we don't need it. We'll no. get out of here just we'll get fine. Out. We'll get out. A little on the messy side. That'll work. It was a valiant effort. I'm gonna need more firewood than I can grab. Oh, I know. <laughs> Uh, now I just got to go for down for one more thing, my gopher stick. <laughs> Get it? Go, go for, go for down the, whatever. It, it was almost too good of a joke. Greg's up here cooking his gopher. Yeah. How's it going? It's going good. I'm going to get mine on. There we go, I finally got them cooking just right. It's all coals and really hot, but no flames. I'm so hungry. I think Greg's finished his gopher already. He's down there going for another cup of coffee. So we can go, he could go for seconds. So fatty and Juicy little, oh, all that fat dripping. Got it to flame back up again. Think it's done. You want a wing or a leg? It's gonna be a hard chew. These guys always are unless you stew them for a bit. Let's give him the bite test. If I can bite him and he doesn't bite back, it's good. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. It's not fish. It's really good. Liver and stuff is all cooked. I guess there's nothing to it, it's finger food. 
Mm. It hasn't always been catching cooks for my slingshot. There's been a lot of other fun in between, like the East Coast Slingshot Tournament, where I almost took first place. Woods course, let's do it. What do we got on the got first one? Oh, this is always the same place, a little hog. First try. <laughs> nice Shot. shooting. Shot. <laughs> All right, we got our shooters today. Introduce yourselves. Uh, Moan Waller, Richmond, Virginia. And Andrew Kircher, Richmond, Virginia. Sweet. Tara Dillard, Richmond, Virginia. And Zachary Fowler, Maine. <laughs> and Chris, Maine. 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 <laughs> Alright, you did it. Word. <laughs> I would have added a ding for him anyway. No, just kidding, huh? And they're starting to get harder. About 20 feet. Hey, up there. Ooh, just under it. I so mean to build one of these when I get home. <laughs> I still have, it's been a year and I'm still saying it. I gotta make one of these up at my house. Wow. Right when you hike up the hill and you get good and winded and you gotta go and take a shot at that little bird right there. Big and then all of a sudden the squirrel falls out of the tree. I'm like, what the? Where is it? Oh, there it is, on the end of that angled stick. Holy cow! All the way out there, right on the end of that angled stick there. That's a. No way! That was sick shooting there. He just like all oh, whatever, you know, no, no big. I'm happy Man, I wanted that one. This woods course is so awesome. Yeah. You gotta get here next year and bridge. join us for this. <laughs> this is great. Get him, Jack. Mm. Nice it's shooting. The branch is blowing in front of it, isn't there? God, Damn. nailed it. That was awesome. That felt good. <laughs> nice. That was a good one. Love shooting up, man. <laughs> yeah. Love shooting up. You gotta be careful who you say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> I just threw man. a shot all I off. Sabotaged. I wanted to I, hit it. I wanted to hit it. <laughs> I sabotaged his turn there with the whole up. shooting up joke. There. <laughs> the camera goes. Where is it? It's, really it's like cool. right there. I just, I'm just gonna throw my ammo at it. <laughs> There's no pouting in slingshots. Nice. That was too good. <laughs> Little ducky, you're the one. You make slingshot shooting so much fun. Yes. Better than yesterday. Where'd he go? <laughs> <laughs> they they move sometimes. <laughs> they can fly away. Yes. Yes. There the shot drop. <laughs> Get rid of the animal. <laughs> Done. I hit a rabbit. Yeah. Yeah, that's nice. They do. That's it a... doesn't feel good until you pull the bands back in it. You know what yeah. I mean? This is HH H by Matt Redding. HH yeah. by Matt Redding? Huh. Cool. We missed that one yesterday. Ah, uh, another deep yellow bird. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like right there. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Ah, top of the head, birdie. Nice. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. right in the eyeball. Right yes. in the eyeball. Yeah, try oh, to flick no one time. You get one shot at, at each of these. Yep. And you get a point for each? Yep. Oh. <laughs> Where are you shooting from? Right, right there. there. Right, oh, there's the snake. Yeah, see, there's the snake. Are you supposed to have a drink of this before you the blue whatever? <laughs> Taste the blue juice. <laughs> Don't drink the Kool-Aid. Okay, left to right. Oh. 
bonus round. She is a little chickadee way, little chickadee. way out there. Ah! Uh, no way! I think I just forgot to record that, but I I hit it. <laughs> <laughs> they look. They're not yeah, laughing. Yeah, yeah, no, I, I actually recorded right in the head. That. You're right in the head. I, I actually recorded oh, you that. Recorded I recorded that. that. That's so funny. Send me the footage. <laughs> I will. Oh, good I'll luck it seeing it though on the GoPro. It's gonna be so tiny, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be all this footage all of a sudden. But I hit it. So we're about to practice our 20 yard, and then do our 20 yard for the scoring, and are shooting the cans down. There's 10 cans. I'm still on the fence about which one I'm gonna go with. I can get 30 shots off with this guy, but I can only get like 12 shots off with this guy, but I'm twice as accurate. I'm gonna play around with it a little bit and see what we do. Ah, no, that's 30 seconds. I wanted to do a 30 second test with each slingshot and see how many I can get in 30 seconds. One minute, starting now. Nice! 10 in a minute. Now, I think I'm going with my Sparrow versus my Hornet. I love this guy, I can get 30 shots off, but, and I could probably knock down 30 cans at half the distance, but this guy I definitely got 10 cans, one miss, 10 cans in one minute. So this is gonna be the one I'm gonna run that with. Let's try the long range shots. That's the one. With this, 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 and then that. This is no slouch either. Look at that, that's a nice one. At 20 yards, that's a good distance. Like you got nine and the last one blows off. Yeah, yeah. All right, it starts when you start. to be cute and kick the last one over. I got nine, that was pretty close. I had a, I had a fumble where the band was all twisted up and uh, it was like this and I went to do my thing and of course this time it rolls right out. That time it couldn't and it was like, ah, I would have had 10 if it wasn't for that little fumble. But you did awesome, man. Thanks. It was great. Yeah. All right, 10 shots, 25 yards. <laughs> oh, that's pretty sharp. That one looks like the two. One there and one there. Turns out it was the number seven shot that hit right where the number three shot hit. Pretty good though. So it's still three. So three, six, nine, twelve. Awesome score. Nice. You did good, man. So that gave me a total score of 28 out of a possible 30. Time for the Spanish knockdowns. See what I can get for a score. You ready to judge me? Right on. That's the dime. All right, as you can see, that one's just a touch bigger than your palm, a little bit bigger than your thumb, like a silver dollar. Seven in total. We got four, four rounds of knocking those down, and then they score us, and that'll mean all my scoring is done for the competition. We'll be able to find out who's got what. You ready? Ready. I'm ready. That's a hell of a lead off. That's, that is a heck of a lead off. Too many mind thinking about it too much. That first round I was in the zone, second round I came out of the zone. Gotta get back in there. Yeah, now that was more of a pride goes before a fall. Like, oh, I did good. Now I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> Two clean runs through and not so bad on the other ones. That's a pretty nice score. I even got a smiley face. 
Hope you had fun. At the uh, what, wait, what? Sublates. He's the official guy. What? What are you uh, talking about? Right now, there's still eight scores that are out. Yeah. Uh, but uh, right now, there's a tie for second. Uh, Ooh. Nathan Master and Zach Fowler are both tied at 184. What? No way. And um, I'm tied with Nathan Masters. We're gonna do a shootout tonight. We're gonna. Wow. At about seven o'clock, we're gonna be doing a shootout. I can't just have second? No. <laughs> There's a shootout. <laughs> Chris, Chris, did you see who's tied with Nathan I, Masters I for hear, second? I hear somebody's tied yeah. for second. <laughs> so you guys gonna do the saw blade shootout? The, oh my goodness, yeah, apparently. We needed a shoot off for a tiebreaker between Nathan Masters and Fowler. Woo! Okay, call it in the air. Fowler's choice. My choice? Uh, I'm gonna let Nathan go first. All right. All right. Yeah. Good choice. <laughs> Giving it to you, man. <laughs> yeah. Hey! Yeah. Okay, we got five. Be a five. There you nice. go. Hi. This is for the win. All right. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, Nathan. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Did you forget something? Yeah, I did. <laughs> I, I need that. Second place, Zach Fowler. Right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> and Mr. Bill Hanks. For the 195 off 216. Thank you, Bill. We gotta get you a green jacket for those five times. <laughs> Alright, it's that time. You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Let's pack it in, head back to Maine. I'm Zachary Fowler, and this is Trick Shot Tuesday, top 10 countdown. Trick Shot Tuesday. Yeah. Coming in at number 10 from the challenge accepted video, card splitting. Which we're gonna rig up and I'm gonna split a zombie card with this slingshot. Whew, here we go. Talk about splitting hairs. I cannot even see the thing. Here we go. 33 feet. That's it. Yeehaw! Coming in at number nine from our 120 yard shot with a slingshot video, Flying Chris. Are you okay? I'm okay. And at number eight from Forging a Railroad Spike Slingshot, Splitting Ammo. I'm gonna split this piece of ammo with the forged slingshot on the forged bushcraft chopper attached to a pole. Have the two pieces of split ammo pop both balloons. Let's try it out. Yeah! <laughs> All right! Yeah! Woo! Yeehaw! Yeehaw! All right. And number seven, also from 120 yard shot with a slingshot, dandelion takedown. Attic hole to a yellow dandelion down below. Oh! 
Nailed it. That was a good one, huh? And number six from Forging a Spoon with a Slingshot video, Forging a Spoon with a Slingshot. Sweet. Now I can eat my cereal. All right. And number five from Fly Hunting with a Slingshot. I got these rubber uh, paint balls that are bouncy ballish thing. They're all see how squishy that is. And I'm gonna see if we can take some flies out inside the house. Be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbits. Oh, ho, 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 take a look at that. That one's nasty. That's gonna leave a mark. And at number four, from threading the needle at 10 meters, clown takedown. 10 meters. Ooh, it was close. Coming in at number three is three in a row from the Goodnight Tea Light video. We got three tea lights and gonna put them out. Lord bless my name. Coming in at number two from our how to make a slingshot out of old skis video. I got something a little smaller. These are chalk ball pellets from Simple Shot. You can get them at the affiliate link for Simple Shot below. But I'm gonna try and shoot it out of the air and Chris is gonna try and steal it from me. Oh, you got it. Wow. You got that one, all right. Somebody's on a roll today with his new pickle fork. Oh. Oh. Now we're getting on, getting our groove on. Oh, somebody nicked that one. Did you see it? You did. Got a little teeny scuff mark right there. <laughs> got like four scuff marks on it. Here, here, and yeah. I know it'll take care of this one that doesn't want to break. Shoot it at something. Boom! Oh! You got it. I got it. And coming in at number one is the slingshot match light from my first ever Trick Shot Tuesday video. The distance is 26 feet. We're gonna light up a match. These are my Strike Anywhere matches I made. You can see the video link below of how I made these. Let's do it. It's time to spark it up. All right, here we go. In the making of some of these Trick Shot Tuesday videos where I cut the card out from between the two bottles even got me noticed by the Go Big Show where I had to go on and shoot in front of Snoop Dogg. So being out in the wilderness helped you find different ways to be creative like this, I expect, right? Yeah. Swing shot! Oh, 
The furthest the slingshot's taken me so far has been Hawaii, where there's been some juicy wild chickens, and we had a good old time with Greg. So we're just hanging out here on the porch in our beautiful Hawaiian morning, and we had already asked the neighbors about these sitting right there, and they're called, what were they called, Greg? Banana polka. Banana polka. Not to be confused with this polka. It's kind of, it's an invasive species like a vine that some people really like because uh, we were told they have flowers, but they're not ripe unless they're yellow. And I'm sitting here and I look out and what do I see up in the trees? Some very yellow ones. Got my slingshot out and I am a good shot. So I think I can pretty easily at this distance, looks to be about my favorite distance, 33 feet. Pop some of the vines with the slingshot. Drop a couple of these yellow fruits down there. Greg will chop down there because he's of got. Of course the, I will. <laughs> he's got. Well, he's got the boots, so we're team working. He's got the boots. I have prison sandals, so we'll be safer if he goes down there. There's another one. Oh, right there. there is the yellow one right there. Right through there. Well, well, maybe I'll take a practice shot at that one. If the fruits are ripe enough and I hit it right at the top of the fruit, maybe I can do it without damaging the fruit a bunch, and down it goes. This is the new Axiom X. Mine's all adjusted to fit my hand. If you haven't seen it already, check out Chris's video. We did the uh, unboxing and trying these out and had a lot of fun with these. And these are pretty sweet. They're very all adjustable. You can um, see here that Chris's is adjusted to be tighter and uh, he likes it the narrower fork gap. I went with wider and uh, my built my own custom slingshot bands with the simple shot latex. They come with bands all set to go. And uh, I think Greg wants to take a couple shots at some point today too. So we will uh, put this band on. Chris has his little lightweight bands that he likes to shoot. So we'll put these ones on for Greg. On this one, he can try it out. Greg is a crack shot with the bow. So we'll see how good of a shot he is with the slingshot. That'd be kind of cool. I know you're good, but uh, the, wind is, the wind is moving it. It is. That is swinging a lot. Oh, first shot he hits it. Yeah, I didn't get it. Uh, that, that, you made uh, it that, those vines might be pretty hard. That was right at the top of the vine, too. Hey! hey got it! <laughs> that was awesome! Nice. That was perfect. I'm like, right at the top of the fruit. Right at the top of the fruit, and if I hit it there and instead of the vine, I gotta get one for Greg too. And there's a couple over here. Alright, I think I got a good angle right here. There's a lot of branches in the way. Oh, oh got one! There's another one. That was perfect. <laughs> Alright, there's one there's more right up more. there too. There's still one more. Right Hopefully you can find them. They just tucked right down in underneath the leaves. This will be an interesting shot. I gotta like, squat. Oh, you ah. hit it that time. Hit it. There we go. Perfect cut. There's one down here somewhere. Oh boy, these vines are something. Yeah, it's probably deep ankle breaking holes inside of. Uh, Oh geez, it could just sink right in between those vines and disappear, huh? Well, I'm trying to be careful. The owner said they call this like the bottomless pit of death off of their porch down here. And Greg's like going along and he's finding that the vines are just covering like holes. secret holes underneath of there. Might just be a lava tube that uh... That a guy could fall into. Oh, I found one. You did? Yeah. I got one. Okay. Holy cow, there's a chameleon. I just waiting for Greg here and I look up. There's a chameleon just cruising around the the forest here, we'll climbing a branch. No big. Huh. That's cool. Alright, there's our treasure. Up. Do you want a wing or a leg? <laughs> I'm gonna just go a taste. Just straight down the center of it. Ooh, it looks like, uh, kind of like the, uh, what is that, passion fruit or something? Mm -hmm. Very seedy. Here we go. Mm. 
Very seedy. Any flavor? Yeah. I'm not going to tell you what the flavor is. You tell me what the flavor is, Greg. I, this is a surprise. This is it's really good. Slightly perfumey. Mmm. That's pretty good. Tell me what you think. Okay. Hmm. What do you think it tastes like? Hmm. It's different. I can't think of anything that. I think it replicates. tastes like a little bit like banana, but also your other favorite fruit. Grapefruit. <laughs> yeah. Can you taste that? I'm not big on it, but. Yeah. <laughs> survival food. <laughs> you can have it. <laughs> Would you believe that, Greg? He's uh, not a fan of the. Did you just spit that out? <laughs> pomegranate. That's what. Not passion fruit. Not as hard as a pomegranate. Very soft. Very juicy. And it has that grapefruit and banana flavor to it. And uh, invasive. So when those seeds come back out of me, that vine's gonna grow somewhere. One thing we always say is check your bands, and sure enough, there's a hole in this band. But that's the beauty of this, the quick clips here. Just undo the Allen key. Well, I shot slingshot when I was a kid all the time, and uh, but it's been a long time. So we'll, we'll see if we uh, still have the touch. I mean, uh, every kid loves a slingshot when they're young. All right, you're good to go, you're safe. Now wait, the other thing is too, is you want to hold it like a finger over and thumb bracing it, or you hold it like this. If you'd like to learn how to shoot a slingshot and hit what you're aiming at, check out our How to Shoot a Slingshot page on FowlersMakeryMischief.com. We have some instructional videos, instructional diagrams that'll get you on point. Oh, that hit the ground. Yep. Good form? Mm-hmm, looks good. Not <clears throat> some world-class slingshotter like you. Oh, he takes the rock out right away. First try. Still low. We're not gonna have any ammo left by the time I'm done. There we go. Number two. Get that elbow up. Higher. Oh, I hit the rocks that time. Yeah. Oh, that's... Did you just hit it? No, I didn't hit it, but you hit I hit the rock just I, underneath of it. Yeah, I was that was close. A, that was one of the target rocks that Did you I hit? hit. Yeah, I don't know about it wasn't that. the target rock you were aiming for, but it was the one that's down oh. into the left of it. It fell over. <laughs> there we go. Hey. Blasted it. That was good. That felt good. Oh, did you see that one? I hit it yeah. and then the ammo rolled out of it. It stopped on it. Well, there's a hollow in it. Mm-hmm. There you hey, go. Hey, you got her. See? Yeah. <laughs> Is that what you did? You brought yeah, it up, yeah, covered the target, up. and then mm -hmm. just pull it. Boom. Nailed I it. I hit it that time. All right. Okay, man. <laughs> I could never match him with the bow. Uh, I have to start practicing, though, because I do want to start moving into someday, you know, shooting, a, getting a deer with the bow and things like that. Maybe yeah. even this come and fall. So. But you can't be good at everything. You can't be an expert at everything. But I mean, both. oh, there's a challenge. There's a. <laughs> all right. Well, time to pack all this up. We're gonna go hunt a chicken, Hawaiian chicken catch and cook. Let's see if we can get one. Five point four. Bring a couple backup bands. State your name and uh, the name of your outfitter, because I won't be able to say it right. Oh yeah, my name is Mike Vitusic. It's Nahele Outfitters. 
N A H E L E. What's that mean? Nahele is the Hawaiian word for forest. Oh, cool. Yeah. So we're gonna head to the forest and get ourselves a wild chicken. Uh, we or, call them jungle fowl. Jungle fowl? Yeah. Is that is that a glorified way of making it sound a little better than absolutely just yeah. a uh, somebody's. Yeah. Uh, let some chickens go five years ago and, and they're still out there doing their thing. And now I do kind of wish I had like full camo so I could be really completely ridiculously kitted out for, uh, for the chicken. For the chicken. The vicious. <laughs> the vicious. Elusive Hawaiian, Hawaiian chicken. Dangerous game. Yeah. Oh, you gotta be careful. This is the toughest hunt I've ever been on. We're gonna start whispering now, even before we leave the driveway, because it's gonna be really tough. We passed some chickens right on the way into the property Mike was taking us to. Unfortunately, they were a little close to the road, so we thought we'd do a little bit of exploring first and come back around and see if they'd moved back into the woods. The property we're on is a private property that Mike manages and is able to guide hunts on. One of the neatest features about the property is this super straight trail made by the native Hawaiians hundreds of years ago. Mike said they used the horizon in some fashion to be able to calculate and design these trails to be extremely straight. It was pretty impressive. But more than that, this property contains the complete diversity of what makes Hawaii so awesome. The property ends on a plateau that goes out into the ocean with some awesome opportunities for fishing and spear fishing, goats in the lower parts of the lava rocks of the property, and from what Mike said, pigs at the upper part of the property where it's more forest. 30 day survival challenge, Hawaii? What do you think? After a little walkabout, we came back around and I set up on the chickens here. And they came in finally far enough away from the road that I could set up on a shot. Unfortunately, they stayed about 45 feet away with just steel ammo. I wanted a shot that was in about 10 yards, 30 feet, so I was confident that I would take them down with one shot and not wound an animal. I'd have to stalk them. After they moved over the hill, they pushed into the bush, which means I didn't have a shot. So I took my hat off and used that to take off the rooster that was guarding him and he came back out to defend the chickens and I had a shot. So I shot and it went like right over his head. I was in, but I was like, he was like, he was like, just as I stood up and took my shot, I missed my chance. We'll check another spot? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Chicken in the bush. One chicken. And one. Oh, two shots. I missed earlier. Got this guy. Well, let's go pluck and cook ourselves a chicken for breakfast. Burr, it's cold out here. That feels nice though. 
It's like 54 degrees. Time to pluck our chicken. Ooh. I want to be warm. I don't want to be cooked. That's for this guy. <laughs> Sun is coming up. It's gonna be a beautiful day in the neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Won't you be? Being that they're juvenile, it makes these pin feathers and the new feathers that are coming in a little bit more work to get out because they're not just, there's a lot more new feathers coming in. It might have been a better idea just to skin him. Greg will be happy when he gets up and we have ourselves a nice wild chicken on, with pineapple and Korean barbecue sauce. This is beautiful just sitting here and the sun coming up in Hawaii plucking a chicken that I harvested with my slingshot. The trick with plucking is quick, fast, hard movements. Sometimes you'll be able to get a lot more than others, but it's really not that hard pinching it. Just like the slingshot ammo, right there. You could make your thumb was up and pinch down and pluck away. This will lock in a lot more flavor, but if I just skinned it, put it in a crock pot with the pineapple and some jalapenos and stuff like that, ooh, you wouldn't even notice it didn't have the skin on it. But we're grilling it with pineapple over the fire. Fire is good and hot. Whew. One thing about me is I always have a hard time giving up on uh, my dream, you know? My dream was a catch and cook a perfect chicken. I got my perfect chicken, but it's not perfect perfect. All these little pin feathers are out and next. Such a small bird like this. Take my knife and I'm just gonna pop the head off. Just toss that right into the fire. No predators here so we don't have to worry about keeping your campsite clean. Something you definitely want to worry about uh, like in the Rockies or elsewhere. And I'm just gonna go in around the crop here at the top. Just open it up. I'm actually gonna split it down the breast and uh, and lay it on the grill on the pineapple and stuff. So we're just gonna go right down the breast and that way it'll cook quicker and it'll be a better cooking on the grill situation. And that's where the pineapple comes in. It'll keep it from, from getting dry. If I do a good job of this, I won't have to wash it or anything. It'll just be ready to go onto the fire. Heart. If you're gonna eat the organs, you definitely have to check the liver, you know? If there's spots on it or something doesn't look right, then you don't wanna eat the organs. And it may even be a sign that the whole game is not good to go, you know? If you do a good job of it, you don't get anything, but I just, poke something, so I got a little bit of poop coming out the back, but. I always cut that little nubbin off the back of the chicken. It has a uh, oil gland and stuff. Yep, got a little bit of chicken poop on me, but I managed to cut it all the way from the bird so it doesn't even need to be washed out. It's ready to go. Go grab my, uh, something to wash with and the uh, barbecue sauce. Get this bird on the fire. This thing holds an edge so well. Mmm. Fresh pineapple. 
enjoy it while it lasts because I'm going back to hardcore keto when I get home. So, hence the <laughs> Korean barbecue sauce and this and having the best of the best. I do so much better when I'm on keto. I sleep better. Here, I feel like I'm half awake half the time and yeah. I don't know if I'll try to keep doing keto my whole life or not, but since Christmas, I'm down like almost 20 pounds, feeling much better. At very least, I think I wanna, maybe once I get down to my target weight and strength and fitness, I'm gonna try and stay there and remain at least low carb, because that makes such a big difference. It's a kind of a hereditary thing. Like some people, they can eat whatever they want, get away with it, but uh, in my family, Eat carbs, look at a donut and you know, beautiful. All right, let's cut some slices and get this thing on the grill. Can't be afraid to get messy when you're doing barbecued chicken. Ooh. That is hot. Chicken is on, but it's springing up a little. I'm gonna maybe take advantage of some of these lava rocks. And that'll pin it and lock more heat in. Well, it'll flatten out. There we go, that keeps it nice and flat. Ooh, that cooked fast. Cooked the little feet right off of it. Whoopsie. This is a little, this is a little dark spot. That's okay. The meat will be good. All right, chicken is done. Woo. Looks pretty good. Legs and the breast meat is looking, oh yeah. She looks good. Oh nice, it is pulling right apart. I'll give you the nicer one. <laughs> Since I burnt the wing off of that one. <laughs> A little slice of pineapple. Let's say grace and Lord, thank you for the chicken. Thank you for this adventure. And for Greg. Pound it. Love you, buddy. The leg pulls right off. That's what we want. Yep. Nice young bird. Yeah. Hmm. Tastes like a wild bird. Yeah. A little stiff. <laughs> like a grouse. Yeah. Like a crock pot bird. Mmm. <laughs> That's good. It's good though. Mmm. It's not tough at all, no. really. No. A little gamey. Yeah. Yeah. A little basic neck. That's not at all. What you wouldn't have done for something like this in Patagonia. Oh, I know. Oh, but I did get that one bird in my slingshot. Right, it's so tiny. It was, and, and like they said on the show, it was like, they bring up a little thing in the corner, it said like 20 calories or something. So basically you would have, need to eat about 60 of those <laughs> a meal. Oh no, a successful mission. Great adventure. Mm -hmm. I've been eating the skin. Oh. I think I got enough of those pin feathers out that it was pretty tasty, pretty crispy. Oh, I ate, ate the skin too. Yep. So that's just a little peek at the adventures the slingshot's taken me on over the years, and I look forward to plenty of future adventures with my trusty slingshot, the Sparrow. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one. Fowler out.